Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture in the course Remote Sensing Principles and Applications. In the last lecture, we started discussing about the various platforms that we use in remote sensing. We discussed about ground based platforms and aerial platforms. Today we are going to start the main discussion topic of this lecture series. Like lecture series in this particular uh, theme of what we are going to discuss is space based satellite platforms. Like even in the introductory lectures, I told you that uh, we will concentrate more on satellite based remote sensing because that is one of the most widely used data collection platform for remote sensing activities. Any user across the globe has the capacity to download the data acquired from a satellite and use it for their applications like civilian satellites. Whereas aircraft uh, observed data or ground observed data, most of them if not all are still treated confidentially or not available in public domain. But relatively uh, if you compare with this, satellite observed data are available relatively easy in a easy more easy manner. Okay. We can just download almost any data we want acquired from a satellite over any uh, region of our interest across the globe. So that is why uh, satellite remote sensing is one of the most widely used uh, technology when you compare with other platforms. The principles are the same like the remote sensing principles are more or less the same but the plat we have to understand the platform to some more extent like how the data is being collected from satellites, how the characteristics of the satellite orbits will affect the way we collect the data. All these things we should uh, get an idea in order for us to appreciate this in a better way. How satellites collect data? Each satellite uh, that is observing the earth from space will revolve around the earth in a particular orbit. So a satellite orbit is kind of like you can think it of like a path in which the satellite will be constantly moving. Say uh, in the earlier classes I discussed about geostationary orbits and uh, near polar orbits. When I discussed about the like the data collection, when we just before we discussed this broom, push broom and all, I told you briefly about near polar orbits, uh, geostationary satellites and all. So basically each satellite will be in its own orbit. So that is we can think it of as define, a predefined path in which the satellite has to move perfectly. If the satellite comes out of its path, uh, normally the engineer sitting from ground will try to uh, bring it back to its designated orbit to achieve like the required project uh, goals. Okay. So what exactly an orbit? An orbit is like a predefined path uh, in which the satellite moves around the earth. So if this is the earth, if the satellite moves around the earth like this, it is an orbit or if this is the earth, satellite can move around like this any different orbit it can take and the satellite will be will be in that orbit for that particular mission it has to be in that orbit in order to achieve the mission goals. If the satellite comes out of it definitely has to be brought back to its orbit. So it is kind of like a predefined path in which a satellite revolves around it. And for earth observing satellites all the orbits will have uh, what to say will revolve around the earth with earth center as also the uh, what to say like for circular orbits I am talking about it will be kind of centered in the earth, so cent earth center and the orbit center will most likely match. Okay. So for remote sensing applications we can think of orbits as uh, circular orbits like whatever discussions we are going to do we will assume those orbits are circular because most of them are near circular if not perfectly circular. There are special cases in which orbits are elliptical uh, like the way earth revolves around the sun like sun is here earth revolves in an elliptical orbit. Similarly satellites also will revolve around the earth in elliptical orbits but we will not discuss that we will confine our discussions to circular or near circular orbits because most of the commonly used remote sensing satellites revolve in near circular orbits. Okay. So a satellite has to be launched uh, from ground. So once the, satel once the satellite is carried by a rocket the satellite will be placed in its orbit some sort of like uh, orbital maneuver uh, some sort of maneuvers will be carried out by the ground based controls in order to put the satellite in its designated orbit. Once the satellite reaches its orbit 
it will self sustain for a certain period like without requiring any sort of like ground based uh, control. How the satellite sustains itself in an orbit with very minimal support from the ground? First thing is there are like two forces majorly will be acting on the satellite which is in an orbit. First thing is earth's gravity. If a satellite is moving around the earth, earth's gravity will try to pull it downwards. That is the first force. Second force is due to the circular motion of the satellite, there will be like a centrifugal force which will try to take the satellite in the opposite direction. Like in our school physics, we learned about centripetal force and centrifugal force, right? So the effect of centrifugal force is to take us away from the circular motion. If you are like uh, moving in kind of like a merry-go-round, uh, the speed of the velocity at which you are like rotating will try to push you away from that merry-go-round. We may, if the merry-go-round is rotated very fast uh, by the shopkeeper or someone, we will be feeling as if we are like flying like this. So we will be like moving and rotating in like a slightly inclined manner, right? That is because of the centrifugal force. It, it pulls us away from the circular motion. Same thing. Uh, the centrifugal force will be acting on the satellite trying to move it away from its circular orbit. So these two forces will balance out each other in order to maintain the satellite in its orbit. The earth's gravitational force will, will be balanced out by the centrifugal force due to the rotation or revolution of the satellite around the earth's surface. So simply put the force due to gravity can be written like this. So here I am writing it in form of F is equal to ma. Okay. So m is the mass, a is acceleration. Since we are talking about gravity, we use uh, the acceleration due to gravity, gs. So the gs value we know 9.81 meter per second square on the surface of the earth. Okay. So if we use that, say this is like earth center, this is like surface of the earth, the satellite will be still at a certain height away from the earth surface. So this force due to gravity, we have to balance it for this particular orbital height. So that is why we are using this kind of like an inverse square law kind of relationship. R by small r the whole square. So capital R is the radius of earth. Uh, the small r is a summation of radius of earth plus the orbital height. say uh, 700 kilometers away from the earth surface, uh, 1000 kilometers away from the earth surface and so on. So this particular equation basically gives you the um, force due to gravity. This force is balanced by the centrifugal force. Uh, that formula is mv square by r. Uh, m is the mass of the body, v is the velocity with which it is moving and r again the radius at which the object is moving from the center of earth. Okay, I also already told you like the orbits uh, in which the satellite is moving, the center will center of the orbit and the earth center will match with each other, like they will be placed like this, right? So uh, this small r is the distance of the orbit from the center of the earth, that is nothing but the radius of earth r plus the orbital height h, okay? So this is like centrifugal force, both of them will balance out each other, equate both of them. So uh, that is, uh, I just erase this, mgs r by r the whole square, you can equate to mv square by r. From this, you can calculate the velocity. By this equation, you can cancel out the terms and you can get the uh, velocity of the platform that is or the satellite that is moving around. Say this formula gives you the velocity at which the satellite will be moving. The velocity will be is equal to square root of acceleration due to gravity multiplied by radius of earth square divided by uh, radius of the orbit from the earth center. Okay? So this is like a very simple formula which we can use to calculate the velocity at which a satellite is moving around the earth. If we know the velocity, we can calculate uh, the time taken by a satellite to complete one full uh, orbit around the earth. Like uh, say if there is sun, if there is earth, we all know the earth takes one full year to complete one full circle around the sun, right? Similarly, each satellite will take certain amount of time to complete one full circle around the earth. 
we call it as the orbital period of the satellite. That orbital period of the satellite also we can calculate. So, so the formula is here, it is like derived in a pretty simple way. So, the time taken like when the satellite completes one, say this is earth, this is the orbit in which the satellite is moving, say the satellite is here. Let us say the satellite starts from point A, it will revolve earth something like this, it will again come back to the same point A. So, the time elapsed between uh, for the satellite to complete one full circle we call it as the orbital period. And within that orbital period the satellite completes this one full circle, the circumference it completes the circumference is given by 2 pi small r that is the radius of this circle which is a combination of radius of earth plus orbital height h. Uh, so, this is 2 pi r it completes one full circle and it moves with a velocity of v like uh, we all know that uh, what to say distance is equal to velocity into time we know. Uh, we know the velocity now using the previous formula. So, the time taken to complete is distance by velocity and the distance we know uh, the circumference of the orbit which is 2 pi r uh, and then v we can calculate from the formula. So, using this we can calculate the time taken for the satellite to complete one full uh, revolution around the earth surface. So, if you look at this particular slide we can understand that there is a relationship between the altitude of the platform the velocity of the platform and the orbital period of the satellite. Say altitude, if the altitude increases that velocity will decrease, say altitude is given in x axis. So, velocity is given in this particular axis. Okay. So, the velocity decreases as the altitude increases. Similarly, the time period taken to complete one full circle around the earth surface increases as the orbital uh, height increases. Okay. So, most of the uh, satellites in the near polar orbit will be around this range uh, 400 to 800 kilometer range typically. So, you can see uh, what to say the period in which they orbit. So, the period which the orbit lies something around uh, here to here roughly they may take something around like uh, what is it 2 hours or so if it is like in an 800 kilometer orbit they may take anywhere between like uh, uh, above one and a half hours to 2 hours kind of to complete like one full rotate uh, revolution around the earth surface like earth observation satellite in this 400 to 800 kilometer band where most of the near polar satellites are located. So, based on the orbital height the velocity of the platform will be fixed we need not do it like once it is put into orbit the satellite has to move in that particular velocity it will automatically start moving then only it will be balanced out. If it moves any faster or any slower the orbit is going to change actually. Okay, so, say for example, the orbit uh, uh, satellite is going to be uh, is slowing down. When it is slowing down uh, due to some effect, then the earth's gravity will uh, try to start pulling it down easily. So, this is called like orbital perturbations, this can happen. So, unless the velocity is maintained, the orbit cannot be maintained, the velocity will be there. It is, it is defined by this law. Uh, gravitational force has to be balanced out by uh, centrifugal force. Only if this happens, uh, satellite will be in its orbit. So, the velocity is kind of like predetermined. Okay. Also, the time period is also determined with respect to orbital height. So, the mission planners, when they plan for a mission, they will try to analyze what orbital height we should achieve in order to achieve the mission goals. Okay, we, can we put the satellite in uh, 700 kilometers orbit? or we can put it in 400 kilometers orbit all these things people will do um, based on they will take into account all the factors and decide the orbital height based on the orbital height the orbital period and also the coverage around the earth surface will vary. So, in order for us to further discuss orbits we need to know two important variables or parameters related to orbit. Actually in order to locate a satellite in space we need like uh, six different elements to know, we, we call it as like Keplerian elements, but uh, in order to keep the discussion simple, we will just uh, try to learn about like 
uh, two important uh, parameters about orbits which we should uh, understand. The first thing what we call it as orbital inclination and second thing what we call it as um, RAN or right ascension of the ascending node. Okay, so, these two parameters we will uh, learn uh, before we move ahead. So, what exactly is an orbital inclination? Inclination means the angle uh, made by the orbital plane with respect to earth's equatorial plane. So, here in this particular diagram this is earth's surface, this is the earth's equator. So, each satellite will have its own orbit uh, defined. Say when you look at in from any one particular angle, uh, it will be appearing in form of like a line. In fact, it is like a two dimensional plane. Uh, like if it is earth is like this, the orbit will be like kind of like this. It is like a plane, orbital plane. So, the angle made by the orbital plane and the equator, we call it as orbital inclination simply put okay here i'm not going in like in a complex way i'm defining it in a as simple way as possible so this orbital plane or this inclination can vary between 0 to 180 degrees so 0 means orbit is placed along the equator earth's equator satellite is moving in the same direction as that of earth's surface then 180 degrees this way around orbit is still in equator but the satellite is moving in direction opposite to that of earth. Say earth is rotating like this, satellite may be moving like this. Some satellites may be are having inclination something around this 90 to 100 degrees. That means earth is here, satellite will move around like this from pole to pole we can say or near pole to near pole, near north pole to near south pole. The orbital plane will be oriented like this. So, this angle is what we call uh, the orbital inclination. Okay, and so typically for satellites uh, which is in this kind of like a near polar orbits, the general convention to measure inclination is say this is earth, Sorry. this is earth, this is the earth's equator. Let us say there is some orbit something like, uh, like this. So, we measure the uh, angle inclination angle i that is like kind of like a convention okay we will measure the inclination angle when the satellite is moving like this towards north and then we will measure angle in anti clockwise rotation that is we will uh, see the uh, we will see the, uh, we will see in that particular direction in which the satellite appears as if it is moving from south to north then at that particular direction we will measure the angle between earth's equator and the orbital plane in anti clockwise direction okay so this is like a convention for measuring inclination for satellites that are moving from pole to pole similarly if the satellite has i0 or 180 based on the direction in which it uh, moves normally say if it moves in uh, direction same that of earth say earth is moving like this if the satellite is also moving like this we call it as like 0 degrees inclination if it is at the equator or if, if it is at the equator but if it moves in opposite direction we call it having an inclination of 180 degrees these are basically the conventions so normally a satellite with inclination angle 0 to 90 degrees uh, will be understood to move in the direction same that of earth say if earth is rotating like this satellite will be moving like this we call it as prograde motion okay so in the same direction as it of earth surface the inclination will be from 0 to 90 degrees these are like small conventions people follow that's why i'm telling it repeatedly so for certain satellites inclination will be more than 90 degrees under such circumstances um, we have to understand the satellite moves in a direction opposite to that of earth's motion say earth is moving like this satellite will be moving like in some other plane like this either along the equator or along the 
pole to pole that is fine but still the net resultant direction will be say earth moves from west to east the satellite will be moving from east to west. So, this is regards to orbital inclination. Then comes uh, right ascension of the ascending node or simply put we will call it as orbital longitude just for the sake of our simplicity while talking. So, what exactly this orbital longitude is? Let us say we have sun, earth revolves around the sun again in an elliptical orbit, but here we have put it in kind of like a circular orbit for simplicity sake, it is true it is not like a, really it is not circular, it is elliptical we all know. So, in this orbit there will be like uh, say earth is tilted in its axis right, earth is tilted 23 and a half degrees in its axis. So, due to this earth's tilt and due to the earth's and this is sun, this is earth and due to earth's revolution around the sun over a period of year the sun will appear as if it is moving from 23 and a half degrees north to 23 and a half degrees south and then come back. So, it is up, say earth is tilted like this, sun is here due to earth's rotation around the sun and changing this elliptical orbit and all sun will appear to move from. Uh, 23 and a half degree north to 23 and a half degree south we know this during March earth uh, the sun will be around the near the equator it will slowly move towards uh, 23 and a half degree north latitude we call it as summer for the northern hemisphere. Then again it slowly move towards the equator go towards southern hemisphere 23 and a half degree south then again it will come to equator it will complete one full cycle equator to 23 and a half degree north again come to equator go to 23 and a half degree south again come to equator one full circle it will complete in one year. So, you can see the sun moves from equator to north 23 and a half degree in tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn repeatedly within a year. So, you can think of uh, the sun moves in one particular direction right. So, there is a uh, particular day in which sun will be exactly over at the equator in its way to the northern hemisphere like say now the sun is at southern hemisphere 23 and a half degree south here. Then while moving towards northern hemisphere it will cross the equator once during that particular day that will happen during like uh, March every year. We call it as vernal equinox where uh, the day the daylight period will be most likely equal to the length of night day time is equal to night time the time duration. So, during summer we have longer days during winter we have longer nights on equinox or around equinox the length of day will be exactly equal. So, on the day of equinox uh, there will be like a we can draw a line joining earth center and the sun say earth is moving around in its orbit this is the position in the earth orbit in which the earth achieves on the day of vernal equinox ok. On the day of vernal equinox you draw a line connecting sun and the earth and fix this line wherever the earth moves let us say we are like able to somehow fix this line. So, the angle between this particular line and our orbital plane in which direction it is oriented we call that as orbital longitude ok. So, this is like again like a very simplified definition. Here also there is kind of one thing we have to remember like uh, vernal equinox we defined earth is moving from southern hemisphere to northern hemisphere on that particular day it will cross the equator. So, it is kind of like coming from uh, bottom of earth to top we can think it of like, like, like if you orient north upwards you can think it of it is coming from here to here there it is crossing the equator that day is vernal equinox. Similarly, satellite also especially if it is moving from like pole to poles it will have uh, it will move from southern hemisphere to northern hemisphere northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere like this. Then also even satellites around the earth will cross the equator from south to north once from north to south once in every orbit in every single rotation uh, around the earth it will it will cross the equator from uh, 
so moving from south to north and then similarly from moving from north to south. Okay. So, this motion uh, when a satellite moves from southern hemisphere to northern hemisphere we call it as ascending pass. Okay. So, these are some terminologies we use uh, you need to like uh, know them and understand them. Ascending pass we call when the satellite moves from south to north. Descending pass we call when a satellite moves from north to south like this. Okay. So, there will be like a point in the orbit when the satellite will be exactly over the equator moving from south to north. Say this is earth satellite is moving like this. Say from south to north when it is moving at a given point of time it will cross the equator. Hold, let us say we are able to hold the satellite at that particular point. At that particular point if you hold it the orbital plane will be in kind of like a certain angle. So, the angle made by uh, the orbital plane and this line joining the sun and the earth on the day of vernal equinox we call it as orbital longitude or technically we call it as right ascension of the ascending node. Okay, the angle made by this ascending node point like the orbital plane where the ascending node is let us say the ascending node is here in the orbit. So, the angle made between this and the line joining sun and the earth we call it as right ascension of the ascending node. So, these two things are like orbital inclination and this right ascension of the ascending node are two important things we should know and based on this we will discuss further. Actually, uh, there are like plenty of other uh, elements we should know in order to define like a satellite in its orbit. Like if it is a circular orbit, we need to know this h basically like the orbital height above the earth's surface or if it is like an elliptical orbit, uh, instead of this orbital height h we should know what is known as the semi major axis and semi minor axis like uh, if you have an ellipse elliptical orbit uh, we will always have something kind of like a semi major axis a semi minor axis b we do not have like one single radius we have this a b we have learnt it in this school geometry right if it is an elliptical orbit we should know this if it is a circular orbit we should know the uh, orbital height h or the distance from distance of the orbit from the center of the earth. So, these things we should know. Similarly, we should know the uh, what to say the angle between perigee positions and all. So, just for simplicity I am not going into the details only two parameters we are defining uh, one is inclination another one is uh, simply put orbital longitude or ran right ascension of the ascending node. So, in this lecture uh, as a summary we started discussing about the satellite based orbits we just got introduced to how like satellites maintain its orbit uh, the relationship between the orbital height uh, velocity and the time period of the orbit to complete one full revolution assuming circular orbits whatever we are discussing we assume the orbit is a circle and also we got introduced to two important concepts the orbital inclination of the orbital plane and the orbital longitude or right ascension of the ascending node. With this we end this lecture, thank you very much.